we have talked a lot about high E2, high estrogen in men, but actually there are also questions about low estrogen in men. So can that cause any problems? Probably it can, since high estrogen is very beneficial also for men. So what are the symptoms of low estrogen? And if there are, uh, what can men do about it? This video is sponsored by Mizumi, the number one pick for men on TRT. Shop now at Mizumi's using the link in the description of this video. So, good question. Think primarily of women in menopause. What are some of the manifestations of menopause, perimenopause and full onset menopause later on? We know that the first thing that women experience as an early sign is a difference in mood generally a decrease in the quality of moods, right? Maybe some depression, maybe some mild you know, irritation or, or, or aggression, uh, changes in body temperature sensation, right? Night sweats, pulse sweats, uh, you know, very sensitive to, to heat and air conditioning, you know, the whole rebalancing of your, of your central thermometer per se. Um, later on, manifestations that are more physiological and less so felt, are bone mineral density, right? Women tend to develop osteoporosis later on in life. And that is a result directly from a reduction in estrogen. So if your estrogen levels are low, you can you know, expect your muscle density, your bone mineral density to suffer. Potential cardiovascular issues. If you consider that most women don't have heart disease or strokes or heart attacks early on, because we do know that estrogen is cardioprotective. So a lot of that happens to deteriorate when your numbers are low. So how do we alleviate low estrogen in men? For starters, if you are on therapy and you're taking an aromatase inhibitor, which is a fancy term for estrogen blocker, okay? This is a medication that prevents your body from producing the aromatase enzyme that converts the testosterone into estrogen, stop taking the medication. This is gonna give you two benefits. First, it's going to allow you to convert estrogen in a healthy manner. And we have many videos discussing the important roles of estrogen and just how it's made in the man's body as well as in postmenopausal women. Second, the direct effect of some of these aromatase inhibitors has negative side effects in and of itself directly from the medication, secondary to the fact that you're inhibiting estrogen. So you're getting hit with a double whammy here. So stopping your aromatase inhibitors is one way to increase your estrogen levels both in serum as well as intra and paracrine within the target tissues where they act. This is a more natural and slightly slower process of increasing aromatization back to homeostasis. The more rapid way is if you're grossly deficient or if you suffer from an aromatase deficiency is to supplement exogenous estradiol. Make sure it is a bioidentical 17 uh, beta estradiol and not a primarin or one of these synthetic uh, uh, you know, conjugated equine estrogens which have been associated with cancer. This is why estrogen got a bad name back in the late 90s, early 2000s is because they were deriving them from horse urine. So again, if it's pure estradiol, you should be fine. It is fairly potent. You do not need to dose it high. If it's an injectable form, they do make an oral capsule available as well. And I know it's funny for a guy to say, hey, I'm taking estrogen capsules, but if you're grossly deficient, you may need it. And there are indications for it at times. So those are two ways to bounce back your estradiol. Now, if you're not on testosterone or any hormone replacement therapy and you have low estrogen, generally that is coupled with low testosterone. Because remember, testosterone is the raw ingredient by which estrogen is converted in the male body. So if your estradiol is low, chances are the raw ingredient that precedes your estrogen is your testosterone, that's probably low. So often fixing the testosterone deficiency will naturally self-regulate the estrogen production. So you have to first diagnose why you're low. Is this a direct effect of taking an inhibitor? Is this a secondary effect of having low T, right? Why are we low in estrogen to begin with? And some, some natural supplements may have a lowering effect as well, and you may not be aware of them, like zinc, for example, is one that has been shown to reduce serum estrogen. Again, we don't know how that acts in the target tissues or directly within the cells that convert it, but within serum, at least, we notice a decrease in serum estradiol. 
and men who supplement zinc. So again, you have to first recognize why you're deficient, and then you can begin a plan of attack as to how you're going to normalize your levels once again. Mm -hmm. Is it a common thing, low estrogen in men on TRT? Unfortunately, it's very common because, as you know, Stephen, that many, many providers are still prescribing an astrazole yes. or, you know, um, uh, aromacin or, or some form of an estrogen blocker or aromatase inhibitor to most men on testosterone. So oftentimes when we see guys coming into a group and they're relatively new, or even if they've been on for years with a particular clinic, they'll come in and they'll report symptoms of low testosterone that they'll say, I don't understand, everything looks great. But we often see, this hurts me a lot to see is guys come in and say, I've tried TRT and it just doesn't work for me. It's not what I've anticipated. I feel worse than I did before. You know, I had a honeymoon phase, et cetera, et cetera. I want to come off. And it's often a result of literally destroying one of the great benefits of testosterone therapy, which is estrogen, um, by these aromatase inhibitors. So unfortunately, it's more common than I'd like to see, yes. If you truly have a deficiency, like I said, it could be addressed with exogenous supplementation, but oftentimes it is inhibited directly by medication that is coupled with your therapy. So I urge you to go to our channel and watch some of the estrogen videos specifically for the benefit. And there's also some TRT 101 videos explaining why and how it could and should be done correctly compared with the status quo and why it's typically done incorrectly. Okay, I'll share these two videos on the end screen. Thank you, Gil. My pleasure.